Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'll be teaching you how to understand front, back, and side lighting for landscape photography so you can learn to manage the light you're given and in result, take better landscape photographs right after this. Hey, what's up guys and welcome into the video. Now on this channel, we talk landscape photography, how you can shoot better photographs, taking you out into the field, post-processing techniques, and actually gear reviews. So if you're new here, if you've never seen this channel before, consider subscribing below. Now in this video specifically, I'm gonna be teaching you how to understand lighting for landscape photography and how to manage it to construct better photographs of landscapes. Now, landscape lighting is basically not any different than any other type of photographic lighting or artistic lighting there is. You have your basic three types of lighting. You have backlighting, you have front lighting, and you have side lighting. Now, learning how to use these best way possible in landscape photography is really important because the sun, our main lighting source, and what we use as a light source as landscape photographers, is constantly moving and shifting. We have to understand how to manage light to construct better photographs and overall create a better framed photographic composition to construct a better photograph. So let's tackle backlighting first. And the first thing you have to understand about any type of photographic lighting for landscapes is that lighting is relative to the subject. So if we're talking about backlighting, the lighting or the light source is going to be at the back of your subject. So let's say you're photographing a sunrise on a beach and you have an amazing sand dune scene in front of you with a nice fence going back and behind the sand dune or your subject is the light source itself, the sun. You're going to be shooting directly into that sunlight because your subject is directly between you and the sun. So the backlighting is coming from the sun itself, illuminating the back of your subject. So you have to understand how to shoot directly into the sunlight, which can be pretty difficult. Now, if you're doing this, you have to get good lighting throughout the frame so that you can have even lighting on your entire photograph. Sometimes you will have to set your camera settings so that you have enough light, even though it's overexposed for the sky and underexposed a little bit for the foreground or the earth, but you can even those out in post-processing later. Now, sometimes with backlighting too, you have good opportunity to use a multiple exposure effect and blend those together in Photoshop later. And there's a good example of how to do that in Photoshop with a card that's showing up in the top corner of your screen right now. So you can learn how to blend exposures in Photoshop so you can really nail down exposures and photo blending in post-processing. These are also really good opportunities to use graduated neutral density filters if you like to use grad ND filters. I personally do not like to use grad ND filters, but a lot of photographers do like to use grad ND filters. So basically what those are, are filters that you put on the end of your lens and they're different shades of gray on the glass. So it either goes from very dark and has a hard edge where you put your horizon line and then light on bottom, or it has a very soft edge that transitions very smoothly into the translucent part of the glass on the bottom where you can kind of adjust that horizon line or the exchange from gray to translucent on the filter itself. So you can have your choice of what type of grad ND filter that you want to use. If you want examples, I have some recommended examples in the description below. But like I said, I've used those in the past. I don't use them anymore because you can achieve the same effect in Lightroom or Photoshop with multiple exposure blending or just with a graduated filter in Lightroom. But all in all, backlighting is really good for sunrise and sunset shots. All right guys, so let's go over side lighting. Side lighting is honestly my favorite form of lighting in landscape photography because it allows me to play around with textures and it also gives me enough lighting on my subjects that I can have them properly illuminated. Now I use side lighting not for those grand subjects like a mountain scene, but I actually use side lighting 
for smaller scenes and smaller textures. So let's take this example of a walkway on a beach with sand textures in the foreground with a pathway that's leading you right into the sky itself, which is, I guess, a subject, but it's nicely illuminated by the sunrise that was coming up. Notice in the foreground, we have a lot of textures where people have been stepping through the sand and creating these nice little divots in the sand to create texture. With side lighting and the lighting coming in from the right or the left, basically you get soft shadows in those divots to create nice texture and detail throughout your photograph. But it's enough light to still light the posts that are on the sides of the walkway itself thus creating enough light to illuminate this landscape scene and make it worthy of a photograph. So I like side lighting a lot. It allows me to play around with smaller scenes and landscapes. And it's a good way to use the available light that's right after sunrise photography to play around with smaller scenes. These two photographs, the ones that I shared for backlighting and the ones I'm sharing for side lighting right now were actually shot right after one another because I used the lighting for sunrise and then quickly ran over to the smaller scene and used side lighting to create enough detail in the foreground to make this an interesting photograph. I like to use this technique. It allows me to double the amount of photographs that I can take from any specific location and come away with quality shots, knowing how to use the light that's changing around me and master my landscape photography lighting. So finally, let's get to front lighting. Front lighting is when the light source or the sun is going to be behind you and illuminating the subject in front of you. So you're basically finding yourself in between the sun and whatever subject that you're photographing. This is a really good way to photograph mountains. I love mountain photography with front lighting because your light source is illuminating the mountain itself and really giving that big photograph of the mountain, your subject, Mountains command like a strong composition and a strong light on them. So when you have front lighting directly on the mountain itself, it really illuminates these mountains and makes them shine. And you really don't even have to have any composition around them. It can be just a secluded mountain with front lighting and that creates enough detail and enough contrast within the image to still make it interesting and you don't have to worry about including all this stuff. You can actually simplify your photography with front lighting and it still creates amazing images that you can shoot. So front lighting is really useful to use when you're photographing sunrise and sunset because you really get these soft colorful illuminations on whatever your subject might be because it's shining directly on them and the warmer tones of sunrise and sunset and those softer tones create really compelling color in your light and in your subject. So front lighting is really good for these times of day. If you're painting the edges of the day, those sunrise hours and those sunset hours, these are really good times to shoot that front lighting. Now, when you get into the alpenglow hours where you still have front lighting, but what you're getting is actually the shadow of the earth and that edge shadow of the earth's horizon is casting a shadow up taller subjects such as mountains. So as that shadow rises, you're getting the last little bit of glow on the subjects of your photographs. Being these mountains, they're really tall, so you can stretch your photographic timing out till after the sun actually goes down where you can't see it on the horizon, but a taller subject such as a mountain can still see those edges of the sunlight. And as that shadow line goes up, you can snap photos and create really interesting front lighting concepts with Alpenglow. You do this either right before the sun comes up like I did here on Mount Whitney in the Eastern Sierras with the sun behind me illuminating the very peaks of Mount Whitney right before the sun broke the horizon from where I was standing. You can also do it at sunset like I did here in Rocky Mountain National Park as the sun had already set. You had that shadow from the Earth's horizon line going up the mountain behind this bull elk during the elk rut in Rocky Mountain National Park. Alpenglow and front lighting using the available light that you have creates really dynamic photographs 
for landscape photography. So using what you've learned today, you can create compelling landscape photographs just using the available light that you have and knowing how it's going to affect the landscape around you so that you can either create really interesting subject photography using like strong subjects such as mountains or you can create really elaborate photographs using backlighting and side lighting. Knowing how the light is going to shine on your subjects will allow you to take better photographs and more thoughtful photographs of the scene around you and ultimately make you a better well-rounded photographer. So if you liked this video and you found it helpful, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. Consider subscribing or comment below if you have any questions about photographic lighting. I'd love to help you guys out with your questions, but until the next video, keep shooting guys.